Hey everybody, we've got um, some properties of limits today and these formulas will probably look pretty familiar. It might remind you of properties that you've done with exponents and logs and um, all different kinds of stuff. But I want you to copy some of this stuff down. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. But we have these four different like kind of formulas that work with limits. First of all, if you are adding together two limits uh, or the limit of two functions that are being added together, you can take the limits individually and just add them up. So it's kind of like splitting up this addition of two formulas into the limit of one of the formulas plus the limit of the other formula. Um, same exact thing works for subtraction. You can split it up into two individual limits of two individual formulas. Same thing with multiplication. So like the formula is the exact same for all of these. It just replaced the addition sign with the subtraction sign, et cetera. And then same thing for division. You can divide the two formulas or you can take the limits individually and divide the limits. Okay, so pause the video and finish copying that down if you're not done yet, but I'm gonna blast through um, these first couple examples because they're very quick. Um, first one is that we're given some information up here. Um, we're given three different limits as x approaches two for all of them, but three different formulas. One of them's f of x, that could be a quadratic, it could be a linear, it could be um, an exponential, anything. We have a g of x formula, we also have an h of x formula. So three different formulas, doesn't matter what they are, but as the limit, as x approaches two, we have different limits for all three of them. And so let's try and use our formulas up here on this example. What that means is I'm gonna split it up into the limit as x approaches 2 of the constant function 4 times the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x minus the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x. So I split it up into three individual things. So this first thing isn't up here in our given list, but that's okay because remember what this looks like. This is a horizontal line at four. And so when X approaches two from the left and the right, it is always going to be four um, because it's just a horizontal constant function. Okay, so then what does F of X look like? We don't know and we don't care because we're given the limit up here as F of X as X approaches two equals negative three. So I'm gonna put negative three right here bring down my minus sign, and then what is the limit of g of x as x approaches 2? Well, that one's right here, it's 5. So we do just some very basic algebra here, and we multiply first. Remember order of operations, this is negative 12 minus 5 equals negative 17. Boom, move on to the next question. Okay, same thing here. I'm going to take the limit as x approaches 2 of three different things that are being multiplied, x, g of x, and h of x. Okay, cool, so limit as x approaches 2 of x times limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, that's in my given, times the limit as x approaches 2 of h of x, that's also in my given. Okay, so I don't know what x looks like. Oh, actually I do, isn't that a linear function? y equals mx plus b, the slope is 1, and the y-intercept is 0. That's just an equation of a line, you guys. And so remember, when you plug in 2 to just one single equation, that's what the limit is. This just gives you 2, because when you plug 2 into x, the only thing you have is 2. And then from my given information up here, the limit as x approaches 2 of g of x, look up at the top, that is 5, it's given. And then same thing for h of x, that is 6, that is also given. Multiply straight across, 2 times 5 times 6 is 60. I told you these are really quick. Let's do one more just like it. I'm going to split this up into the limit of x approaches 2 of f of x divided by limit x approaches 2 h of x minus limit x approaches 2 of 1. Okay, so let's just look up to the given information again. I am given the limit as x approaches 2 of f of x. That is negative 3. I was given that from the top. Same thing for h of x. We were given that number as well. It is 6. Keep the minus sign in the middle. And then remember, this is just a constant function. This is a 1. It's a horizontal line at 1. So as you approach x from the left and from the right, when x equals 2, you get 1. No matter what you have to plug in for x, the y value is always 1. All you have to do is simplify that, and you get negative 3 over 5. I am going to skip the whole next page, you guys. This stuff I want to talk about in class. 
um, example three, four, and five. So go to number six. This is some more Algebra 2 skills. Do you remember how to factor something that looks like this? I guess I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. The first thing we would do whenever we're given just one equation is try and plug in this negative 2. Unfortunately, when you plug in this negative 2 right here, you get 4. Plug it in right here and you get 8. 4 plus 8 is 12. Minus 12 is 0. You get a 0 in the denominator. So make a note about can't plug in negative 2. Um, that's a problem. because it gives zero in the denominator. That means it's undefined. Okay, so that's a problem. And so when that's a problem, what you have to do is use your Algebra 2 skills to try and simplify. And I bet we could factor this and factor this and maybe something will cancel. Then maybe I will be allowed to plug in negative 2. So do you remember how to factor? Let's start with the bottom here. This should be easy to factor. I'm going to just change this into limit x approaches negative 2. Let's do the bottom first because that's easier, x minus 6, x plus 2. Okay, cool. Um, what about the top? Here's what you have to remember about simplifying the top, or factoring the top, rather. Put parentheses around this and parentheses around this and look for GCFs. This is what you do when there are four things up here. Um, so what's the GCF of these two, x squared? And that means if I take out an x squared from just this first pair, I'm left with x plus 2. And what is the GCF of this second group? That looks like a 5. When I take out a 5 from the second group, I have x plus 2. So then remember that this is one of your factors, x plus 2. The other factor is hanging out on the outside, x squared plus 5. This is how to factor something. It's called factoring by grouping. You should remember that from Algebra 2. That's how you get that top part factored. And then now look, we have something that does cancels. And that means that we have a whole at x equals negative 2 when you equal that factored thing to 0, the part that canceled out. Okay. Remember, a whole is also called a point of discontinuity. That's more calculusy, okay? Um, and so now what I'm going to evaluate is the limit. x approaches negative 2, x squared plus 5 over x minus 6. Can I plug this in now without having any problems? Yes. And that is what I'm going to be evaluating at this point. And so when you plug in negative 2 and negative 2 minus 6, you end up with um, 9 over negative 8, or negative 9 eighths. So that is what the limit is. And so just a notation thing that you also need to consider and think about is that once you actually plug in this number um, here into the formula, you no longer write like limit because you are doing the limit. It's kind of like when you square root a number. After you've square rooted it, you don't keep writing the square root symbol. So after you have actually plugged in the negative 2, then you don't have to um, write the limit anymore. It's just a number, negative 9 eighths. OK, this next one. Um, here is something a little bit funky. This you're not going to learn much about this year. You're going to learn a lot about it when you get to calculus. What you need to do is memorize this. This thing needs to be memorized. So star it, so highlight it, circle it, do something. But the limit of x approaches, as x approaches 0, of this sine x over x thing, um, another thing that you should be noticing is you can't plug in 0 here. That would give you a denominator of 0. That's bad. However, you don't need to know how to manipulate it or why that formula is what it is. You'll learn a lot about it next year. For this year, just memorize this and be able to recognize it. What it equals is 1. Okay? Now let's do this last example. And like I said, I'll skip that. That page that I skipped will do that in class. Um, big problem here, I can't plug in 0 here. That is a problem. So what I need to do is simplify it. Can't plug in 0. Again, because it makes the denominator equal to 0. That means you have to use some Algebra 2 skills. The Algebra 2 skills I'm going to use here are going to be the Hart method. I'll split this thing up because I bet we might be able to simplify a little bit. So limit x approaches 0 of 2 sine x over x minus limit. This is using the formulas from the front page, 3x squared over x. Okay. 
Um, so another thing that I'm noticing I can do this too is being multiplied by this. So I can separate that into two different things. Limit x approaches zero of two times. Limit x approaches zero sine x over x minus limit x approaches zero three x squared over x. Okay, so remember this is just a horizontal line at two. So as x is approaching zero from the left and the right, the y value is always two. Um, this is something that you have memorized from up top. Remember it equals one minus, and then what I can do here is I can cancel one of these x's and get rid of the square here. That simplifies a little bit, so now I actually can plug in this zero here. Three times zero is just zero, so this answer is two. So I just wanted you to get exposed to practicing using those formulas and being able to split up limits and stuff. And we're going to do some big time algebra two skill refining um, tomorrow when we do that page that I skipped. Okay. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow.